Impala Films presents Haunted, the audio drama. Season 2, Episode 6, Darkness Falls, Part 4 of 4. Written by Jamie Evans. What are you doing here? You know, you never greet me with the warmth I expect. I can't imagine why. This is the man you were looking for a few months ago. Yes, we caught up to him. Oh, please, I came to you. You could never catch me if I didn't want to be found. Those symbols on the wall. Blood magic. That's what you bought all the blood from the vampires for. Yet again, you proved to be nothing more than a second-rate magician. Blood magic should be fueled by the suffering of the caster. You sacrifice your own essence in exchange for power. And you're as sycophantic a moron as ever I see. Why sacrifice my own blood when I can sacrifice someone else's? Haven't you heard? Work smarter, not harder. Besides, you're hanging around with him, a literal serial killer. You are a serial killer, or did you forget that bit? Technically, yes, but I do it with much more style. Besides, idiot, he's the one who trapped us all here. Is that true? Mother Marwood feels that you are causing too much interference with the Project Indigo. She wanted you held somewhere safe. A prison full of vampires. The vampires will not kill you, Mr. Hunter. They might bite a little, but I am sure you can handle that. They are loyal to Mother Marwood. <laughs> loyal? These creatures know nothing of loyalty. Mother Marwood has provided them with eternal night. She has done more for them than you ever did in your centuries of leadership. <sighs> You will remain here for as long as Mother Ma would seize fit. Though I should mention, however, the vampires are only under instruction to keep James and Carl alive. The rest of you are expendable. Forgive me for admitting, but I look forward to seeing you struggle to survive. I told you it was a trap. Yeah, yeah, you can gloat later. Carl... Why did you call out to Abigail? I knew she'd be with you and that you wouldn't be able to resist the call of some poor stranger in trouble. You know, having the remains of the signal in your head is ever so useful, Abigail. Most people are open to broadcast from the ether, but it's dull and sort of like listening to a myth-tuned radio. You shine like a beacon since your infection. Tell me, what other delightful side effects have you had from the signal? Sometimes I can... Sense things? When we were in Ravensdale, I could sense the pain and the torment of the spirits there. Yes. How was that? Well, it was horrible. They were suffering for so long. Give it time. Feeling all that pain and suffering will harden your heart eventually. You might be more useful than I thought. Now, are you going to let me out of here or not? Absolutely fucking not. Well, I didn't ask for your opinion, did I, lapdog? Well, James... You can't be serious. I have been prisoner with this man for over a week. He is not a good man. What else do you suggest we do, Dan? Honestly? Off the top of my head? Leave him here. We hightail it out of here and leave him in the vampire tower. We can't do that. Oh, MacDonald family. Forgot you were there for a moment. The Lord wouldn't allow us to leave a fellow man behind, regardless of if he's a sinner or not. Okay, shaky reasoning, but the McDonald's agree with me. They don't get a vote. No offence. Why not? Because they have no idea what this bastard did. How many people he's killed, how many lives he's ruined. You know what? I'm done. We should kill this man and be done with it. Don't be so quick to anger. Will you shut up with your bullshit wisdom? I'm tired of you looking down on me. Dan. No, I want to hear this, Abigail. Before we leave... Right here, right now, you tell me why we don't just kill him. Because we don't have the luxury of being like him. The bad guys of the world have always had the advantage of being able to stoop lower and lower. But being one of the good guys means holding yourself to a higher standard. Do you know what happens when you let yourself kill someone? 
Maybe it's justified. Maybe they were a bad person who hurt lots of people. And maybe, just this one time, it's the right thing to do. But then what about the next one? And the one after that? Once you cross the line, it becomes easier and easier to do it again. To justify it to yourself. Until one day, you become the very thing you were trying to defeat. That's bullshit. Is it? Because you killed Paul back in Greenvale. And do you remember how bad you felt? How much it hurt? And yet, ever since then, you are always the first one of us to jump to violence. To jump to killing as a solution. You can make all the pretty speeches that you want. You're living in a fantasy world. I live in the real world. And I know that if you let men like him live, then your moral high ground means nothing because they will undermine it and they will beat you. We don't set the rules. The bad guys do. That's not... I'm not finished. For once, you're going to shut up and listen. You have let this man live before. Every death since then is on you. It's your fault. Bravo, bravo. This is more exciting than EastEnders. In the meantime, we do need to get going. Yeah, before the portal closes. Closes? The portal's going to close? Yes, we need to get going. We're going to break the pipe. You are staying in those handcuffs. Fair enough. Help me break this. <coughs> ah, excellent. Shut up. Are you sure you're making a wise choice? I don't know. Let's see. How have they got you? Silver around my ankles. I cannot remove it. Ah, thank you. That is such a relief. You're scorched pretty bad. How long have you been here? It is difficult to tell in the eternal darkness here. But I think perhaps three weeks. Andre, what is going on? I thought you were trying to live in the shadows, be humane. Things are not good in our culture right now, Mr. Hunter. There are pockets of vampires who are unhappy with our regime. They wish to return to more... Primitive ways. Primitive? They believe vampires should occupy the top of the food chain and kill indiscriminately. They are turning on the remaining leadership. Downstairs we saw vampires unlike anything I've ever seen before. They're feral, out of control. Ah, yes. The abominations. What happened? Do you know how vampires came to be? God cursed heathen sinners? Well, not too far off. All vampires are descended from Vlad Tepes, also known as Vlad the Impaler, and his court. I, myself, served under Vlad. I was given the territory now known as Byzantigrad to rule. Vlad craved power and eternal life. He made a deal with a force from beyond this world, and he and his council were transformed into the original vampires. And from there you spread, biting humans and turning them? Yes. It took us a while to discover that there was a flaw in the vampire curse. Something in our DNA that meant the curse is diluted each time it is passed down. Over the generations, the blood has weakened until, eventually, all the current offspring of my great race is these abominations downstairs. You're dying. Your entire race is dying. Isn't that a good thing? (laughs) Ah! Shh, honey. It's okay. It's okay. Yes. The vampires turned by the original Council of Vlad, are able to create sentient vampires, but the rest of my brethren are dead now. 
I am the last of the originals. And I have decided not to pass on my curse anymore. That's why they're turning on you. They want to keep propagating, but they can't do it properly. They just create those wild creatures. Yes. I'm watching the slow death of my race. Doors open. Let's go. Andre, I'm sorry. I appreciate that. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> what a joke. Aparta sanguis. Mother Marwell, can you hear me? Theo, is the situation progressing? James Hunter and his friends are now prisoners in the tower alongside Carl Trevino. No doubt they are planning their escape as we speak. Mm, let them. The vampires are inconsequential to us, and frankly, the more of those filthy bloodsuckers they take out, the better. Have you planted the curse? I have. Excellent. This may be the most fruitful moment of my research in years. What if things don't go the way we predict? I don't even want to think about it. I have tried too long to bring Project Indigo into fruition. I cannot fail now. Besides, things will go exactly as I predict. I know all of the children too well. Yes, Mother. I will await their emergence from the tower. This way. Who put you in charge? Who are you? Uh, I'm sorry. Who are you? Because I'm looking around here, and do you know what I see when I look at you? What? Someone who is expendable. Carl, where are you going? When they took me prisoner, they took a case I was carrying with me. It's got important things we're going to need if we're going to escape. Mm. Yes, it was this one, I believe. <laughs> Hello, boys. Carl! Ow! A, a little help, guys? George! Brad, no! Stop! Yo, Brad is melting, yeah? Thinking he can take me on. Leave him alone! Oh, is that your mum? P -p Please. Give me that. Hey, suck on this! Ugh. God, it burns! Brian! Oh, son! Why didn't you throw it down? I froze. More like you didn't care if they killed Carl. More will be coming. We need to move. Found my case. And this. Damn it, Carl. Guns aren't usually very effective against vampires, but at a close enough range, this should blow their heads clean off. They're coming. The emergency stairwell. No, we should take the elevators. We don't have time to argue. It's the abominations. They've set them upon us. Run! You're coming with me, Missy. Where's Abigail? Abigail! I can't see her! The emergency stairs, look! Carl! Damn it! There's too many of them. You won't make it through the corridor. Quickly! In the elevator! Get inside, Brian. Damn! He's coming to inside. Which floor? Basement. What? Trust me, they won't expect it. Chris, what are you doing? Come on, put the mop handle down. Get in the elevator. I'm protecting my family. Go, I'm right behind you. Chris, come on, everyone's in. I got one. Oh, no, 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 no. No. No, you stupid fool, no. We have to go. Let go of me! Let go! I wouldn't go back out there if I were you. It's full of vampires. Dan's right. We'd all be better off if we killed you. Until James grows some teeth, that's never going to happen. Open the case. Now. Why? Fine. There's a book. Show me page 16. 
Ah, that's it. We need a bit of blood. What? So I can seal the doors. We need some blood for the spell. Ah, stupid bitch! What did you do that for? You said you wanted blood. Mm. Sigillium hoc introitus. More blood magic? There's been quite a bit of that today. What is that thing you cut me with? Theo gave it to me. Says it's designed specifically for killing the vampires. The stake of St Hubert, he called it. St Hubert? Saint of hunting and metalwork, apparently. Yes, he was. He's also the patron saint of chicken roasters, though, so do with that information what you will. May I see it? (laughs) I'm not giving it to you. I'm not asking you to. Just show it to me. Fine. Hands off. Hmm. Look at those ornate carvings. Theo, I have to hand it to you. What were you saying about Theo? Sorry to love you and leave you, my dear. Believe me. But I have some business I want to take care of. Great. Now I'm left on my own in a tower full of vampires. Why are we in the basement? It's the one move they wouldn't expect. They probably had vampires posted on every floor except this one. Because they wouldn't expect humans to run to the basement where we're pinned in. No, not necessarily. (laughs) Kelly, Brian, I am so sorry. We didn't want any of this. You people are all insane. This is normal for you. We need to focus on getting out of here, Ma. We can can miss Dad later. You're a very strong young man. Stay away from him. He shouldn't have to be strong. He's a child. I know. I know. I thought you said there was a way out down here. There should be a loading bay that will allow you to get up to the outside of the building. What are you doing? Andre! Please, I beg you, stay out of this. Take your friends and the fellow humans and get back to your own reality before the portal closes. This is between me and my progeny. What are you... The boiler... The pressure is soaring! You're gonna blow the boiler! My race has seen its time in the world. If those abominations up there are what we're doomed to become then I will do my part to put a stop to our race whilst vampires still have some respectability to their name. Andre. Please, do not try to stop me, Mr. Hunter. These creatures cannot be allowed to reach reality. Abigail is still up there in the tower. I need time to save her before you do it. You don't have long before the portal closes. I can't leave without her. We're not going back up there. The two humans can stay with me. I'll keep them safe, and I'll make sure they make it to the portal in time, even if you don't come back. Thank you. I'm coming too. Okay. I was expecting you to argue. Abigail is in danger. Where else would you be? Good. Glad we're starting to understand one another. Besides, if I let you go, you'd probably end up siding with the vampires. (sighs) I look sharp enough to stab a vampire. James, you should take a steak as well. I know you don't like the idea of killing someone. No, I don't. This is a code you abide by. With much discipline, my friend. The young police officer over there thinks you do so because you are afraid to kill. I think it is something different. Carl Trevino, he thinks so too. Carl doesn't know me as well as he thinks he does. Perhaps. But I rather suspect he does. For your own sake, friend. I hope you are able to find peace. You sound like you're saying goodbye, Andre. Perhaps I am. I do not think it is likely I will be seeing you again after this. We tried. We really did. To adapt to the rules of human society, to source our food ethically and without harm. It's a shame that 
this dream is not shared by more members of my race. Perhaps in whatever life comes next, things can be different. I hope so. It would be nice to have another chance at what you've tried to achieve. Goodbye, James Hunter. Remember, you do not have long. The boilers will blow soon. The portal will close soon after. Find your friend. And if I may offer you a word of advice, just because you refuse to kill Cartravino doesn't mean you have to save him. If he happened to be in the tower when the boiler exploded, well, let's just say I think all of your lives would be better. Come on, humans. I don't blame you. Just so you know. Brian, I'm so sorry about your dad. Please. I don't want to talk about it. If I talk about it, I'll freak. Well, there isn't time for that now. Just promise me you'll get me and my mum out of here. I promise. Nobody else dies on my watch. James, we have to go. I'll see you soon, Brian. Look after your mum. You really aren't taking a weapon? Don't need a weapon. I need something else. I'll know it when I see it. Ha! This. This is what I need. Rope. You know what? Whatever. If you want to get yourself killed, that's on you. What's the plan? Okay, we have no idea which floor Abigail is on. No way of contacting her, and the tower is swarming with vampires. As soon as we go up in the lift, they'll know where we are. No bright ideas. No last-minute surprises. Actually, I might have something. Sorry, I don't have time to play today. Hello? No. No. Come out, come out, wherever you are. You looking for me, fam? Behind you, honey. Oh, look. A party. Just for me. You're surrounded, funny man. You promised Isabella Marwood you wouldn't hurt me, didn't you? Nah, we promised we wouldn't kill you. But we can hurt you plenty, you know. Oh, good. You don't have enough bullets to shoot us all, you feel me? I don't need the gun. I understand you were just carrying out Isabella Marwood's orders, but you still took me prisoner and kept me in that filthy apartment for days. And I just can't let that go. You're outnumbered ten to one, man. What exactly are you going to do, fam? Nothing. <laughs> you pathetic creatures really have no idea who you're messing with. Let me show you what I can do. We're almost home, Brian. Not far. What are we going to do when we get back through? Our ride is trashed, remember? Then we will walk to the next town, okay, sweetie? Anything to be out of here. <laughs> What was that? Oh shit, look, half the building is falling. My plan to blow the boilers may have been for now. The tower might collapse or burn down before they go. Was that James? I suspect not. I suspect Mr. Trevino is behind this. Trying to leave the party early, are we? Oh! Theo Harper, stand aside. I'm taking these humans back to their world. Oh, I'm sorry. But I really can't allow that. Why not? I might need you. What do you need us for? The end game is almost upon us. I might need a few more bargaining chips to tip the scales. End game? Oh, I see. This was always about more than simply capturing Carl Trevino and James Hunter. Indeed. He needs to be pushed. Perhaps he needs to lose everything. What the hell was that? 
Jamie, I've got the phone for working. I need to find James and Dan. Oh, where do I even start? They're hiding in this tower somewhere. Check every room, every hiding place. Shit, shit, shit. Think, think. Okay, where would James go? The logic would be to try and get out on the ground floor, so that's probably where most of the vampires are guarding. One of them is in the stairwell. I can smell a ratchet perfume. Ratchet? Follow me. Shit. The only way is up, I guess. They're in the lift. How stupid are they? What floor are they going to? 13. They're on floor 13. Get them! Hiding on top of the elevator and getting out on the floor above. Do you really think that will have worked? Well, at the very least, it misdirects them for a moment. They all think we're on floor 13 when we're actually on 14. Again, you really think they'll fall for that? Dan. They're chavs. Uh, point taken. Abigail! Abigail, can you hear us? Hello, lads. So much for them being idiots. Run! You can't outrun us, fam. We're gonna murk you, innit? Shit! Oh, fucking hell, they're strong! Let go of him! Let go of him! Take that, you piece of shit! Whoa! Yeah! What? Nothing. Come on. They're getting on us. How yeah. many? I twenty. Head for the stairs. Yeah. What the fuck was that? Uh, the corridor is falling. What, what happened? Did the boiler blow already? Uh, crawl, Dad. Crawl. Uh, uh, uh. Half the building must have collapsed. What if Abigail was caught in it? Don't think like that. Dan? James? We're over here! Abigail! Oh my god! No, no, don't come towards us. The floor is too unstable. We'll come to you. What happened? I don't know, but hurry. They're coming up the stairs. Oh, I'm glad you're okay, Abigail. Okay, follow me. Why are we going up? Only way to escape the vampires. We'll never get through them going down. Dan, give me your mop handle. Why? Give it. That won't hold them. Quick, one of the apartments. Grab something heavy. This bookcase? It'll do. Three, two, one, heave. <laughs> Wedge it at a steep angle so it acts like a block. How long will it hold? There's so many of them. It'll hold long enough. Besides, the stairwell is exactly where we want them all. Why? Because then they won't be where we're going to escape. Do we know what caused that explosion? I bet my money on it being Carl. James, Dan. There's a good chance we're not making it out of this one. Don't say that. We are trapped at the top of the building with hordes of vampires coming to get us. No, because I've got this. I promised Brian McDonald I wouldn't let anyone else die. We're all getting out of here. What's he going to do with all that rope? Your guess is as good as mine. Follow him! Oh my god! How could that have happened? Standing on the short concrete balcony on the southern face of the building, I looked to my left and could see dark smoke billowing from that half of the tower. I leaned out, craning my neck as far as possible. Roughly halfway up, around the seventh or eighth floor, I could see flames burning brightly. The dark smoke pumping from the fiery core. It looked as though the east side of the seventh floor had been subject to an explosion and every floor above it, now lacking the structural integrity to support it, had sagged, making the tower look distinctly lopsided. So what exactly are we going to do? We're going to have to try and circumvent the vampires, force them to all head in one direction while we circle back. That's what the rope is for. Oh, you can't mean... I do. Don't look so scared, Deputy. Let's be realistic here. The most likely of us to plummet to their deaths is me. 
So we're going to lure all the vampires up here and then climb down to a lower floor using this rope? That's exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> That's insane! Any better ideas? Kill them! How? How exactly are you going to kill over a hundred vampires with a mop handle? What if we lure them all up here, turn on all the gas in the flats, and then light them up? Bang! We can't do that. There's too much risk that the tower will collapse while we're still in it. This is the plan. Here. Use that to lure them in. I'll secure the rope. Okay. Okay, I'm on it. This better work. It will work. Nobody else is dying tonight. Eleventh floor clear. Move up. Stop! What is that? Abigail, this is madness. Dan, please, just do as he says. He's insane, Abby. They're upstairs. Follow their voices. He's got this trap on the top floor. A hundred vampire blowers. How much more can you trust this man? I've told you before and I'll tell you again. I trust James with my life. I can't believe this. We're trapped up here. We're gonna die! Grab James Hunter. Kill the two sidekicks. Where are they? I can't believe this! We're trapped up here. We are going to die! A recording? What game is this? Find them! This is as far as the rope reaches. Get onto that balcony! I'm trying! Oh, my hands are burning from the friction. Deputy, try and grab it with your legs. We need to get off this rope before the vampires realise they've been tricked. Almost there. Almost. Yes, got it. Oh, all right, come down slowly, Abigail. Uh, uh, oh. I've, got, I've got you. Oh. Thanks, Dan. James? I'm coming. It's just a little slower going. It's hard to... Oh, oh my hands. I don't let go, James. I I know it hurts, but you can't let go. Come on, you're nearly there. Well, that was terrifying. You're telling me. Come on. Okay, coast is clear. Okay, get to the stairwell. Shit. Bright ideas. Carl, come on. No time to dawdle. You need stakes when you can blow their heads clean off. What did you do, Carl? I killed vampires. By blowing a hole in the tower? It's called finesse. How did you do that? Never mind that. The vampires know we tricked them. Look! I look back over my shoulder and felt my heart leap into my throat. The abominable young vampires were pouring out of the tower, spilling from every window and climbing down the sides to get us. Like a swarm of deadly ants fleeing their nest, they reached the ground and began to give chase. Portal! Dead ahead! Where's Andre, Kelly and Brian? Don't stop! They're gaining on us! (coughs) Andre's trap! The boiler just blew! Jesus, we were close! Through the portal, one at a time! Bright sunlight. Oh, thank God. Woo! I haven't felt adrenaline like that for a while. They can't come through. Look, the surviving vampires can't come through the portal because it's still daytime this side. You did it, James. Thanks to you, we're all alive. Nobody else died. (laughs) I wouldn't be so sure of that. Damn it, Carl! Not me this time, old friend. I'm just here to watch. What? Hello again, Mr. Hunter. Thea, what are you doing back here? I never left. I've been watching very carefully as I was instructed to do. I must commend you on your ingenuity in escaping the tower. I rather thought that the vampires would destroy your friends and take you prisoner. What can I say? I'm very good at thinking outside the box. Mm. It's a shame you broke your promise, though. What promise? Nobody else dies, I believe you said. 
a lovely sentiment, but unfortunately you let poor Andre down. Observe. No! Abs. Andre. Andre! I'm afraid he didn't survive the trip through the portal. Sunlight, a vampire's biggest weakness. Still, at least his cursed soul is allowed to rest now. Why? Don't you know? No, tell me! I know I shouldn't question the glorious Mother Marwood, but sometimes I wonder what she sees in the pair of you rejects! Project Indigo? Yes. Whatever sick program we were part of. Ah. What? Ah. You are part of Project Indigo. Did you really think it ended when you left the orphanage? Carl Trevino figured it out, didn't you, Carl? They've been playing us like puppets, old chap. I'm sorry. Now is time for your next test. Test? Let's see just how far we can push you. Out! Now! No, please, my son, please. Leave me alone. Out here now, lady. Kelly! Stay back! Abs! Mr. Hunter, let me ask you a question. Why is it you do what you do? Why did you leave the orphanage and begin investigating the paranormal? Why did you agree to go to Greenville with Abigail? And why do you continue to put yourself in danger for the sake of others? What do you mean? It is a simple question. I don't understand what you mean. Why wouldn't I help people? If I have the ability to do that, why wouldn't I? I don't care for platitudes and pleasantries, Mr. Hunter. A real answer, please. I... It... It started as a way to try and prove my parents were still out there somewhere. That some sort of afterlife existed where they were still there. And then I met Abigail. Interesting. Tell me more. Abigail helped me to realise I could help more people. That I should help more people. She cares so much about others, it's infectious. I have known loss, and I have known grief and suffering and loneliness so powerful it feels like it will choke the very life from your body. But she helped me to realise that I can use all that experience to help people, to bring them hope in their darkest times. (laughs) Fascinating. Such ego you possess. You believe you can bear such impact on another person's life as to give them hope. Let me see it. Give this lady hope now. What? Look into her eyes and give her hope as I hold this gun to her head. But please, Mr. Honor. Kelly... Kelly, listen to me. I'm going to get you out of this, okay? I'm going to get you and your son out of this. I promise you that and... No! You bastard! No! No, why? Why did you do that? You keep making promises you can't keep. Carl. Carl, help me, please. I know you won't believe me right now. I know that it will be a while before you understand this. But I am helping you. Right now, I'm helping. The final test needs to be completed. That's why I'm leaving my case here. I believe you'll pass the test. You'll need what's inside. No, no, what are you doing? Theo, I'm leaving. Don't try to stop me. Mother Marwood can scheme all she likes, but I won't bow to her whims unless I'm good and ready. Stop wasting time with the pre-show. You'll know there's only one thing that will break him. Carl! I'm sorry, old friend. I promise you it brings me no pleasure to see you suffer this way. You are the closest thing I have to a family. But in order for you to see that, you need to go through this. It's the only way for you to realize that you are the same as me. That we are brothers in arms. I look forward to the day we stand together again. You bastard! You call yourself his brother and yet you're walking away! Sometimes walking away is for the best. It's funny. I thought I'd want to see this. Now I realise I don't. What are you talking about? How are you feeling, Abigail? 
What? A little feverish by now, I imagine. Yes? What? How do you know? Lift up your sleeve. Let me see your arm. What's happening to me? <gasps> your veins. It's like you've been poisoned. Abigail! Show them, Theo. It's the same. What's happening to them? I don't know. I don't know. What have you done? There is no such thing as St. Hubert's stake, Abigail. There never has been. The device you cut yourself on, the same device that also wounded Theo, is called the Gemini Flask. No! Oh yes, Mr. Hunter, my final gambit. Now we will see your breaking point. Why? Why is this so important to you? What's happening, James? James, what is a Gemini Flask? It's a legend. It's not supposed to be real. Oh, it is real, and it has been in the possession of Mother Marwood for a long time. She has instructed me to use it now to give you your next test. To help you move to the next stage of Project Indigo. What even is Project Indigo? What is she doing to us? That information is not for you to know. James! What is a Gemini Flask? What is happening to Abigail? The Gemini Flask is a powerful blood curse. It forces two people to have their life forces linked and slowly begins poisoning them. Once the two victims are chosen, the curse cannot be removed, altered or broken until one of the two cursed souls is dead. This is your test, James Hunter. This is the next stage of Project Indigo. James! Abigail! James, she's burning up! Why? Why would you do something like this? Why would you volunteer to die? Why is it so important to you that I kill somebody? Tell them why you refuse to kill, James Hunter. Even when your life is in danger, why is it you refuse to kill your foes? It isn't right. Do not lie to me, Mr. Hunter. I am not above killing more of your friends. I have the woman's son inside. I can bring him out here and kill him too. What do you want to hear from me, Thea? I want you to admit the truth. I want you to face your true nature. James, do something! Do something, James. Time is running out for you. The sun is setting. Soon those hordes of angry vampires will be able to come through the portal. I wonder what will kill Abigail first, the vampires or the curse? Stop this. Please stop this. The curse cannot be undone. Here. Take it. Make your choice. James, do it! She's dying! Indeed she is. She doesn't have long, James. Stop this. Stop it now. Only you can stop this, James. I think you abide by your rule, not because you care, not because you're truly a moral man. I think you know deep inside you, you are just like me. Just like Carl, we are kindred spirits, and you know that if you let yourself slip just one time, you will always be able to slip again. I will not be like you. You don't sound so sure. And again, perhaps I'm wrong. Perhaps Abigail Corbin doesn't mean anything to you anyway. Perhaps she is nothing more than an accessory to pull around to feed your ego. Let her die. She means nothing. James! Do it! God damn it! James, James, I believe in you. I believe in you. Don't give them what they want. Don't give them what they want. Kill them. Ah! He's done it. I knew it. Never threaten Abigail Corbin, and never underestimate how much she means to me. I will go to the ends of the earth for her. I will always be there to save her, and yes, I will even kill for her. It is good, you know. It is good to know you are one of us. Your love 
for her. It will be your destruction. May the abyss claim my soul. Abigail! Dan, tell me he didn't. He did. He did, Abigail. He made the right choice. He saved you. He saved you. Oh, God. Oh, God. I thought I'd lost you. <gasps> Mr. Hunter, thank you. I... Ma. Ma. <laughs> James, the sun is going down. The, the vampires are coming. James. What is it? Can it stop the vampires? There's nothing you can do, James Hunter. The sun is almost down. We're coming to get you. No, you aren't. Please. The magician's spell book. How are you going to stop us with that? <laughs> We will overrun you and kill you and everybody you love. Today is not the day to threaten the people I love. All my life I have lost people. All my life I have failed to protect them. My parents, Melissa Black, Malcolm Halliday, Grace Goodwin, Daniel Moorcroft, Kayla Chapman, Ray O'Shaughnessy, Ryan Smith. I hear their names every night, every time I close my eyes, and I am tired of losing people, and I am tired of showing mercy to monsters. I will not lose Abigail, and I will not have mercy anymore. What are you doing? You want your precious darkness. Take it. I'm sealing off the splinter dimension permanently. You, you, you can't. No more humans for you to drain. You'll starve to death in there. You can't do this. Show mercy. James Hunter had mercy. I don't. James, no. I was too weak to move, propped up in Dan's lap as he cradled me in his arms. I watched from the cold cobblestone floor as the man I thought I knew shucked the code of honour he had imposed on himself for so long and gave in to all the rage and the torment that had festered inside of him for years. I felt frozen in fear as I saw for the first time a darkness I could not have imagined overtake the man who had been my hero for so long. The man who stood there using blood magic to seal off the splinter dimension and starve a hundred sentient beings was unrecognisable to me. I saw no trace of humour or compassion or mercy in the glassy eyes which looked on as the portal sealed itself forever. This was not James Hunter. This was somebody else. Somebody fuelled by cruelty and darkness. This was the man Carl wanted. A man without mercy. Without limits. Abigail, he's lost it. Let me go. No, Abigail, stay. He needs me. James, James, stop this now. I won't lose anybody else. This is what they wanted, what they all wanted. And if this is what it takes to keep you safe, then I will do it. No, not in my name. Do you hear me? Never in my name. I would rather die than see you become like Carl. I would rather lose everything than see you slip into that darkness. Your compassion and your mercy are what makes you, you. They are what makes you strong. Stronger than Carl or Theo could ever be. Don't lose sight of that. Not for me. Not for anybody. Please, James. I need you. Let go of this. Let go of the book. Come back to me. I need you. I need you. Abigail. You are my hero, James. Please, come back to me. Abigail. Abigail. What have I done? What have I done? It's okay. It's okay.
starring Jamie Evans as James Hunter, Isabella Barbieri as Abigail Corbin, and Luke Hunter as Dan Cowell. Also featuring Harry McElroy, David Anthony Green, Shayla Tharp, Lila May, Kevin Stemp, Tony Marden, Tess Gustard, Benton Hodges, Charles Topping, Edina Hadley, Phoebe Elizabeth Royal, Dean Kilby, Tom McCarthy, Elliot Bigdon, Harleen Sahota, and David Gardner as Carl Trevino. Haunted, the audio drama is created by Jamie Evans, with all episodes produced and directed by Jamie Evans and Benton Hodges. Audio engineering by Benton Hodges and Jamie Evans. Haunted is a production of Impala Films and is recorded at Three Sprite Media Studios, with special thanks to Duncan Newham for equipment support. Opening and closing themes by James Crow. Thank you for listening to this audio presentation. Haunted will return after a brief mid-season break.